like if we if we use a different regulatory system. So it's really important that we talk about that. Mm -hmm. But it's also really important that we 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 find that there are methadone programs uh, throughout Canada where people need them. That there are syringe exchanges in smaller places and cities. That harm reduction coverage is is maximized. So right. we don't want to. We're not sort of a. There are groups that just focus on anti-prohibition. That's all. That's all. You know, they are about like Transform in uh, the UK. Uh, some of the cannabis organizations. That's what they do, and it's great. We want to sort of do that, acknowledge that as a really important part of our process. But we also want to make sure that you know people have access to clean syringes and methadone and drug treatment when they when they need it. Right. So we're 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 a broad we have about we have five poli major policy areas. But this is a this is obviously a major one because we we feel that you you can't really even have a prevention discussion until you acknowledge the elephant in the room. And mm -hmm. that's drug prohibition. Yeah. And that's you know, how can you on the one hand say we really we really want you to get a grip on your drug problem, but you know, you're a criminal. <laughs> right. You know? yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so it's this mixed message where we say it's a public health, right now we say it's a health issue. If you develop a drug problem, it's a health issue. But when you go out into the street every day, you're criminalized. And, the, and your drug use, your drug purchasing is in, within a criminalized environment. So that's, until we get rid of that criminalization piece and sort of treat people as people with problems, if they have problems, and most people don't have drug problems who use drugs, um, but if they do have problems, we want them to be not criminalized. That's like the worst thing we can do, because that pushes them away. In, in exactly. Margins, right? exactly. We, don't, we don't criminalize alcoholics. No, we, so. we, we, we try and figure out what to do with them, and it's a, it's a difficult addiction, but we certainly sure. don't criminalize them. No, we're not we, criminalized. we criminalize them if they drive a car. We say that is off, you know, that's not on. So there are certain behaviors that you, if you if you break the law under the influence, then yeah, I mean I think you, then that's a different matter that you're breaking different laws. If you criminalize drunken behavior, but not the right. addiction of being well, and that's how it should be. Alcohol. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's what right. I was just yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. totally understand. It's really the only logical way. I mean, it just doesn't work anymore. But it should apply to other. I mean, I understand it. This should, we should take that further now. And well, apply yeah. that to other drugs individually. Well, and I mean, it's it hasn't been easy because the stigma has been built up for so many years against drugs, and you know, of course, even now we have the Dare program in every school. You know, yeah. to, so there's a lot of stigma around it. Well, and yeah, no, you have to. It's a number. We're 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 having to undo about a hundred years of history. So the the first principle of the drug pro the the, the drug treaties, the international drug treaties, is public health. But Really, if you look at the way the treaties are enforced, it's all about enforcement, punishment, incarceration, prison, and you know. So, so people have a fear of their kids developing drug problems. Fine, uh, that that's legitimate. Um, but the tremendous focus on drugs as the problem has led us astray. The problem, it's not the drugs. So no. I, the anecdote I use is, is you know, young in new, twelve-year-olds, five years ago in Davis Inlet flashed across our TV screens, they were all huffing gasoline in the paper right. bags. It was tragic, it was hopeless, it was the despair, the addiction. No one in Canada, for a second, thought that gasoline was a problem. Right. They didn't, of course they didn't. They knew what the problem was. The problem was not the gasoline, the drug use, the substance use in that case. The problem was loneliness, isolation, uh, lack of self-worth, screwed up families, addicted parents, all of those things. So to focus on the drug as a problem is just, it's a total, uh, it, it's, it's, it's going, it, it's... Uh, Scapegoating. Yeah, I was going to say, it takes away the responsibility for the real yeah. issues. The focus, it yeah. takes away the, it focus, the focus. And it, yeah, yes. so we focus all our time on the drug as a problem when really it's our society that yeah. is the problem. It's, it's our communities, it's, our, it's the way our economy works. It's all of these people that drive people to develop drug problems, right. as they they may develop other addiction problems that aren't to drugs. So that's where we want to shift the, the discussion. What are the real problems? Why do people use drugs and why do people develop problems with drugs? Because most people don't develop problems with drugs. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's a discussion that we need to have, uh, mm -hmm. it's time to have, and the, uh, the, the, the sort of 
vision is that in in the next three to four years that we craft a new drug policy for Canada that's based on public health, scientific evidence, human rights, and social inclusion. So, and then we, we present that to government. Mm -hmm. And uh, the federal government is obviously has a different line now, but they come and go. Governments come and go. I've seen it happen at City Hall, right? They come sure. and go. Yeah. So there may be a new government to present a plan to that they can implement. Well, how about on a more local level? What about provincially and, and municipally? I know that there's obviously the federal drug war is something that's controlled obviously by the federal government, but is there angles, are there other ways we can do things on a more local level? Uh, probably we want to explore, we want to explore with municipalities and provincial governments and of course the federal government. I think municipalities can do a lot around how they deploy their policing. Um, you know, I, I personally think, and I tried to raise this at the city, we should regulate uh, compassion clubs. We should have a we should have a land use category for compassion club, just like we do for health, health clinics and uh, other other kinds of uses. Right. Um, at the time, I was told, you know, best best to proceed as we are now, just turn a blind eye, let it happen. Right. I think that okay, that's fine. It's, uh, that's a strategic decision. I think we should have the discussion, and there's a lot of talk about it. Well, and it's going to happen anyway. I mean, it's, it is happening. Yeah. So let's 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 legitimize it. Yes. Let's so that I think municipalities can take some leadership on that. They have to figure out with their lawyers how to do their law department how to do that, given federal government disagreement. But there are there are Health Canada licensed grow operations within the city of Vancouver limits. So right. so there are, there are some some ways that we can start to. Uh, um, move things along at the, at the local level. And I think the provincial level too, I think the, 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 the province should be taking more leadership to convene a summit uh, to look at the industry, uh, the, the, I guess the cannabis industry, but, but even broader than that, to look at the uh, illegal drug industry and uh, what it's driving and uh, what, what can the province, what analysis can the provinces bring to other provinces and maybe take a leadership role uh, among the provinces, and also ask the federal government to, you know, come on, get, get, let's get serious about this problem. Mm -hmm. You're sticking your head in the sand, it's not going to solve anything. Right? Right. So, Are there ways of working with bodies? Of, sorry, Mick, do you have questions? I have a question from Chad, if I Oh, could. sure, sure. Uh, uh, just wondering, what do you think of uh, Ethan Russo's studies? Oh, uh, well, that's interesting stuff that's very specific to cannabis. Um, Russo, he talks about that, we talked about this actually on Marijuana Man's show just recently, so I'm not really sure if that's necessarily relevant to what we're talking about now, but in the way it might be, it's, um, he's recognized certain chemicals within cannabis that are determined by smell that you can use to actually find out what type of medicine will help you. We have the study hanging on the wall outside here. But, uh, I mean, I, I'm not really sure how that's necessarily related to the drug policy angle here. Well, yeah. I mean, the way, the way I relate it is that the current, the current policy um, minimizes the amount of that kind of research that Absolutely. we can legitimately do. So the research does happen. I don't know where that research happened, whether it was in Canada or somewhere else. Okay. But, you know, given, given the beneficial uses of cannabis, which more and more people are accepting, Shouldn't we have a robust research agenda that 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 gets this stuff out there instead of it sort of trying to seep up through the sidewalk cracks of drug prohibition? It's just insane. Uh, it's a it, and the whole hemp industry that is constrained by our drug policy that that is totally absurd. That that you have to jump through hoops to grow hemp uh, when we could have a robust hemp industry, um, but we can't because of drug prohibition. It just, it, those sorts of things are just insane. So, um, yeah, the research agenda is really important. Yeah. Well, and what I was going to ask before was, on the political level, you know, you talked about bringing this to government and, and handing it over to them. Is that all that can be done on that level? I know in the U.S. we have like the Marijuana Policy Project, which is sort of direct lobbying yeah. on government officials and things like that. Is there any sort of plans for that kind of stuff? Yes. I think, I think my hope would be that through our public discussion and our advocacy efforts, and I guess our, our you know our lobbying efforts with politicians, that we would we would 
begin to give politicians both the research, uh, the data, and the language how to how to move these ideas forward. Because a lot of politicians get it. Yes. They they get it. They understand that this is an absurd policy. It needs to change. But if they try and change it, they won't get elected. Mm -hmm. So we need to we need to figure out a way to to create some safety for them to even talk about these things. Right. Because if if they can't talk about it, then nothing's going to change. So we need to say, okay, look, look, public. You know, these Angus Reid polls show that there's a high level of public support for changing our policies. So let's bring some politicians together and look at that data, look at that those opinion polls, and say, well, how can how can you what kind of what are some first steps that would not be political suicide mm -hmm. or and that, that's why I say I think the, the Premier could call a summit in BC quite easily without taking a position on anything. Mm -hmm. Bring people together to talk about the, 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 the elephant in the room, right. which is this huge illegal drug industry.